to be back, to compel to retire or return, to be down, to dash down, by beating or battering as a wall to lay flat. All I can see when I see that is Jericho's walls coming down flat. To distress or crush, to beat off, to repel or drive back, to beat up, to go about, in quest, to ridicule, to search earnestly or carefully for. Beating the streets is different from going out there and striking and beating up somebody. What God is showing me. It's not beating on the people. It's beating on Satan. Tearing down his strongholds. Amen. Tearing down the walls that came up upon the people. Yeah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds, to casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have to start turning things around by fighting spiritually the battle. That's right. yes. The more people we got, the more we can win. The more we go out there, because I've always prayed, I've always watched Benny Hinn and all them, and, 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 and I fell in love with this ministry about the miracle gifts that he had and my faith ministry that he was in. And I've always longed for that, for gifts of miracles and healing and stuff like that. But the more I got into the Word, the more God started changing what I had in me. Because people are out there not just sick in body, but they're hurt in here. They need healing in here. And I can relate to some of that quite a bit. So God's been dealing with me about changing not just the bodies because some are walking out there lame, some of them are walking out there hurt and they need a good healing. And I can understand that too because I think that's part of my ministry. Yes. And I believe when I start walking out in faith, because he showed me more I walk out in faith, more he's going to allow me to do. Yes. The more I let he allow me to do, the more people is going to start seeing. Yes. They're going to say, that guy, how did he have faith enough to walk out there and do that? The kingdom of God is in you. When you, when you have within you right now everything you need to be is proof producer. Amen. To walk the works of God, it is time for you to accept and recognize the renovation, the renovation of God wants to do, wants to do in, in and through you. Now, but now because of you, you are but because of who God is. It's not of you who you are. It's because God is within you. Amen. Wherever God is appointing the operating the inner power through his saints, there is kingdom of God on earth today. In Luke 17, 20 through 7, 21. You can read this a little bit. Listen, and when he, this is 20, it says, and when he has demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not without observation. Neither shall they say, lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Do not ever be trapped into thinking the kingdom of heaven is in somebody. It's just in a distance. 
but in a distant place to which we are all going to be instantly transformed someday. This limited thing, thinking also fosters high in the sky, inactive thinking. God's army is motor, mobile, mobile. You must take your place in its mighty ranks. Our purpose is to reveal the kingdom now, where there is yet time. It is time that some of our top churches, top church people, have granted difficulty leaving and demonstrating the facts in their lives today. Jesus appointed cleared up, cleared up some very critical questions regarding the kingdom of heaven. For the Pharisees and the Sadducees 2,000 years ago, it seems that these men too were confused about the kingdom of heaven. What is, where it is, and where it's going to come. Luke tells us in our commentary scriptures that the kingdom of God is here, now, within us. And in Luke 10, 8 through 9, he says, Whatsoever city he enter, heal the sick, that the therein and say unto them, Kingdom of God is, is come not unto you. That means we are to go into the world around us and declare God's kingdom and all who will listen and receive it into their own hearts and lives. God is working mightily through his people. But it will take a whole army of victorious, victorious people to finish the task set because before us. It must happen to us. Peter was a great example of a disciple who caught the, the vision of working the works of God. The first time he spoke publicly after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he witnessed some amazing results. 3,000 people were saved in one service in Acts 2, 4, 1. This was just the beginning. The next time, 5,000 men were saved. Now, how many women and children? This wonderful results were not accomplished by preaching alone. Peter had the keys. He had one of their first ministries to grasp the keys of an effective evangelism. As an example of Christ himself. Peter encountered the cripple who had been sitting at the gate of the, of the temple day, day after day for many years. This poor man might, might be a typical of all the needs, the broken, the sin, sick, who long have sat, sat right at the door of the church when their needs Without a doubt, Peter had, had said, the man had many prior occasions, perhaps even tossed him a coin when he could. Many times, Peter walked by him. I really didn't pay him a whole lot of attention. He goes, sir. But he had it. Then he just went right on into the temple. Peter, after the day of Pentecost, he had an, uh, an astounding visitation from God that changed something here. Right. He already had a heart. He just didn't have the mindset. Yeah, Mom. See, that reminds me of me. I had the heart. Right. But my mindset tells me otherwise. Right. Come on. My mindset tells me you can't do this. 
or you won't do this, or other people won't allow you to do it, or won't accept you. So I have a battlefield going on in my mind right. all the time. Right. Because I'm starting to realize that Satan don't want me out there. Try again. Because my heart Come on. is going to go out and break some things yes. off of people that's been tying them down that's and right. binding them Come down yes. for, for your fears. Yes. Speak it till you believe it. That's right. Come Speak on. it till you believe it. When we start stepping out. Come on. With our pure hearts and believing in ourselves. Yeah. We can talk to that man that's sitting down there and said, I don't have what you think you need. What I have, you can definitely have for free. That's right. Because Jesus done done it all for that's us. Right. He done right. spread yeah. it all out. Yes. He was beaten, that's he right. was bruised, he was infirmized for you. He said, I love you just the way you are. Yes. So stand up. Because what I got, he yes. has for you. Yes. 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 So stand up. And I promise you, you can go forward too. Yes. Amen. It's not just that one. It's hundreds of them out there in our city that needs to be changed. I know we're going to have a hard time when we step out from the government, from the different churches. It's yeah. going to come against us. Yeah. But I know that I know that I know that the God that's got our back is going to break. It's going to break the chains of the churches because of one person can go to the Bishop Street and then change the nation. We can stand up as a few and change to our city. Then we go to another city and change it. The more we go to city to city, more people will gather up together and they can spread out through the nations and through every country that's in the world. I see it coming. I can see it coming. Amen. Go, boy. Go. I can see it coming. Oh, vision is coming to you. Yes. Yes. Let's have the battle. Amen. I can't walk in with you. I can't walk in with you. Jesus. 
when Jesus is dead? Peter answered, He is healed by faith in Jesus' name, Hallelujah. whom you crucified, but whom God has raised from the dead. Yeah. Do, you, do you want proof that Jesus is more than just a man? Do you want proof that Jesus is responding to faith in Jesus' name, who is alive? It was an easy thing now, Peter, to tell the people that Jesus is the Son of God. He produced the evidence. He produced the proof. 5,000 men responded were born again in the kingdom of God as a result of one miracle. This story is a tremendous example of one man who learned what is most to do to work the works of God. He took those keys to the temple. The needs were met. The community was swept for Christ because something happened to Peter in the upper room. And I, and I tell you, in the name of Jesus, that it, it happened to this man Peter. It can happen to us. Amen. It can be the most happening it, it can, must happen to us. Jesus went back to his, to his Father to work for which he came here to earth for finish. The victory was won. Now he has compassion, commissioned us, his church, to be his disciples, to go in the strength of his power and position the kingdom, possess the kingdom. He came here to win back from Satan. Producing kind of faith. In Matthew 5 through 10 and 13. You want to know how powerful our God is? It says, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. In Revelation 5 and 5. Then he turned and expecting to see a warring lion. Instead, he saw a gentle lamb that has been slain. Amen. He's mighty. He's powerful. He's victorious. But he's gentle as a lamb. He's gentle because he loves us. He's gentle because he needs us. He knew who we was before the founders of the world. He knew us before our mothers, before we knew, before we knew our own mother. Yes. He's a lamb. The lamb. Once again, we're going to see uh, the war line lay down beside the lamb. We're not going. We can't see it in this wicked world because there's too much death. Mm. There's too much ridicule. There's too much. Bitterness. And too much people want to, to be better than someone else. And if you're not smart, you're not part of our clan. But I believe the power of God is not in the smart man. It's not in the people that's got PhD yeah. that thinks they know it all. The power of God is in someone here with somebody that spends time with Him and in the Word and studies the Word and He prays on a constant basis. That's where the power of the anointing is at. It's not in the knowing the words when you read it. It's not in knowing every word that is said. Oh, I knew what that word means. I know what that means. You said that wrong. No, it's not about that. It's about who you have in here. It's about what you got here. 
Not about what you have been taught. It's not about how smart you are or how much money you got in your pocketbook or in a bank account. Jesus says, I love you the way I love you. I love you because I shed my blood just for you. Amen. You come the way you are because I love you just the way you are. I had a hard time. I'm still fighting this hard time about who I am. But I'm starting to learn that it's not about what people think that I am and why they think I'm that way. It's because I want you that way. Because you're going to reach people they cannot reach. You're going to touch lives the way they're going to be astonished about. So wipe yourself clean. Wipe yourself off. Get up and walk towards where I got. Because I got your back. I will be there. You preach it, I will do it. You take care of it, I'm going to do it. So Father God, as I leave, as I preach to myself tonight, I'm going to step out and just trust you. And to trust you in everything I'm going to do. From this day forward, Father. From this day forward. I looked down at myself because I always felt like I wasn't ready. I haven't seen things in my life that needed to be seen. I haven't seen miracles in my life. I haven't seen healing in my life. But she said, step out. And I trust you. So Father God, I'm going to trust you. And I want you to just do it because it's going to be you, not me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.